What's up guys, Justin with Fix My PEV here, and today we're going to talk about something that we've actually been talking about on this channel for a few weeks now. It is calibration for your one wheel. And today we're going to be going through the process for NRF Connect, which is actually the manual process. Our website does have a process that works on iOS devices that's a little bit easier to follow. We'll have separate videos for those ones, but today this is also somewhat easy to follow. Unfortunately, we had some guides out that were showing the process on how to do this for the pint. And I actually had a pint of my own that had previously been modified with rewheel. And that took away the Bluetooth handshake requirements. It gave me a lot more time to complete the commands. Unfortunately, that Bluetooth handshake times out a lot quicker and behaves a lot differently for people who have not actually modified their firmware, especially since rewheel has been pulled from the internet. So at this time, NRF Connect is going to be a very easy way for you to calibrate a couple of things on your Pint or Pint X. Number one, you're gonna connect to factory mode. Number two, you can actually recalibrate your Hall Effect sensors. So those are going to, it's not completely necessary all the time, but those are going to read the location and communication between the Hall Effect sensors and the controller inside of the stator, inside the hub, and that's going to ensure that those are operating as they should. Again, you don't have to do that all the time. The more important focus of this is actually for what we might call digital tilt kit. And that is going to allow you to reset the level calibration of your Pint or Pine X, especially if you have aftermarket rails that change the nose height when you're riding or the tail height if you're riding in reverse. This will allow you to dial that in, get it fine tuned for your unique riding style and your preferences. So I'm gonna show the process on iOS. I'm gonna show the process on Android. If you have an Android device, I'm gonna go ahead and put a timestamp down below. You can jump forward. You'll be able to see the process for that. You don't have to sit through the iOS, but I will be starting with the iOS process. So I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna to get to work showing you guys how to really smooth out your experience with your Pint or Pint X. Okay, so the calibration process for both the Pint and the Pint X is going to consist of very similar steps to some of the other boards if you happen to have seen any of the other videos. However, they are not exactly the same. They are fairly similar to the GT minus the Hall Effect sensor calibration that we're gonna go through today, but they are a lot more like the XR. And the XR, the reason we're not doing the same video is because the pint's gonna react just a little bit differently and figured it would be a better way to just go ahead and show you what to expect with the board that you have right in front of you. So, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this process as I dust off my board a little bit. Fun fact, this is the first one wheel I ever owned. It is a 5314 pint. It has just under, I wanna say 600 miles on it has seen a lot less use since I got my XR and my GT, but it is still old faithful, old reliable. Shout out to Rewheel RIP for allowing me to unlock some features of this that have made it fun again. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about today, sadly, but we are going to talk about the NRF Connect calibration process. So the first thing you want to do with your Pint or Pine X is you wanna go ahead and turn it on. We won't be able to do anything here if it is not turned on. We can confirm that it's on because we have this fancy light bar here. So once we have it on, we're gonna go ahead and open up our one wheel app. We can see our pint there. We don't wanna to connect to it though. We wanna go ahead and just open the one wheel app and then minimize it. We're gonna keep it right in the background. We then wanna go out to NRF Connect. Drag down if you need to refresh the screen to show devices, but we're gonna look for our Pint or Pine X, and there's mine right there. The second one down, I'm gonna click Connect. And then I am just going to leave it on this screen. I'm gonna minimize that and go back to the One Wheel app. And I'm going to connect to my Pint or Pine X. Now that we're connected on the One Wheel app, we're gonna go back to NRF Connect. Again, making sure the One Wheel app is simply minimized in the background, not closed and we should have this screen still up. We should see that it says we are still connected because we see the word disconnect and we are going to find the unknown characteristic with the UUID E659F302, which is right here. On that characteristic, we're gonna hit the down arrow, the one with the line under it on the far right. That's going to enable notifications because 
the device and our phone are communicating back and forth via Bluetooth, and that's part of this process here. So next we're going to hit the up arrow. This is how we actually send commands to our One Wheel Pint or Pine X. And the first thing we want to do is get into factory mode. To do that, we're going to type in the code CBCB, Charlie Boy, Charlie Boy, and we're going to hit right. And our light bar should illuminate green for a moment, just like mine just did. That tells us that we are now in factory mode. This is the nice thing about the GT and the Pint. We have that nice feedback based on the light bar. Unfortunately, the XR doesn't have that. It's got its own little quirks and indications as we go through that. But again, that's another video. So we got our green light. We are now in factory mode. The next thing we're gonna want to do, and I should have mentioned this earlier, but no biggie. You wanna make sure that your board is level in the orientation that you're gonna want it calibrated in. And you also wanna make sure that the tire is off the ground below it, that it can spin freely. Like in this case, I'm using a trim bin. Mine can spin freely. It's just got some resistance because the board's on. But we're gonna calibrate the Hall Effect sensors here. And this is just for demonstrative purposes. You don't have to do this every single time, especially if you just wanna do the digital tilt kit. But I'm gonna show you this process here. Just something I like to do when I'm going through the process. So I'm gonna hit the up arrow and I'm gonna type in the code C-A-E-A, -E Charlie Adam, Edward Adam. I'm gonna click right and we should see something happen here. All right, so that actually did work. And I'm gonna to try to send this again because I wanna show you something that happens from time to time. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to generate it for you today, but let's just give it a shot. Nothing has happened. I'm sending the same code one more time, maybe third time's a charm. C-A-E-A. -E -A. It's not happening. I'll tell you what normally happens. You may get an error 22, I believe. The light will be flashing after doing the Hall Effect sensor calibration. That whole effort that failed right in front of you was just an attempt for me to tell you that if that happens, don't worry about it whatsoever because the next step we're gonna do will actually take care of that error if it ever comes up at that point of the process. So. Since that didn't happen, we have calibrated our Hall Effect sensors three times now, and we're gonna go ahead and move on. You don't have to do that three times, just as a side note, you really only need to do it once if you're gonna do it at all. But we're gonna go ahead and take care of our digital tilt now, especially if you have W's, that's very helpful. I have the stock straight rails here, I don't really need to do this, but for the sake of the demonstration today, it's gonna be helpful to tell you guys how to do it on your boards. So we're gonna hit that up arrow one last time, we're gonna put in the code C-A-C-A, -A, Charlie Adam, Charlie Adam. And we are going to click right. We're gonna get another green flash. And that lets us know that our calibration was successful. So at this point, I like to go ahead and disconnect from everything and close everything out, including the One Wheel app. Kind of doing this the long way. I hit disconnect and I'm force closing it. You'll really only have to force close it. And we're gonna go ahead and power cycle our board. This is actually the most important step that I'm showing you right now. Because if we don't power cycle it, then we're still in factory mode and we can't really do anything with that. Now that the board has been power cycled, my board's posied, so I'm just gonna hit one side. I just wanna make sure that the motor turns. It wants to, it's not tilted, but there we go. That is the entire process for iOS on the Pint and the Pine X. So next, we're gonna go ahead and jump into Android. Stay tuned. Okay, so calibration process for the Pint and Pine X on the Android is a little bit different from iOS. Not crazy different, but there's just a different order of operations here. So we're gonna go ahead and take you through that today. The first thing you wanna do is go ahead and make sure that your board is level oriented the way that you're going to want to calibrate it when you do the digital tilt calibration or re-level calibration. You also, if you're gonna be calibrating your Hall Effect sensors today, not completely mandatory, but I'm gonna show you how, you wanna make sure that your tire is off of the ground or the surface below it so that it can spin freely. And you'll see exactly why here in a bit. So now that we have prepared our board for the process, we wanna go ahead and turn it on. We have our nice light bar that tells us the board is on and we are going to open up NRF Connect on our Android device. I'm gonna go ahead and drag down just to make sure I have a fresh list. 
If it's not scanning, you can hit scanning in the upper right. Mine is because it says stop scanning. You can tell. And I'm going to connect to my one wheel pint. You'll want to connect to your pint or pint X. And then once we're connected, we're going to see this screen. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and click disconnect, but make sure to stay on this screen. Once we have disconnected and we have this screen still up, we're going to go ahead and minimize. Make sure you don't close NRF connect, just minimize it. Like I drug up partially and then clicked away and open up the one wheel app on your Android device. And then go ahead and connect to the same board that you connected to on NRF Connect. Once we got our battery percentage, we know we're connected. We're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna minimize and we're gonna go back to NRF Connect. And you can see actually, it now says disconnect, which tells us that it is in fact connected to our one wheel. Even though we just disconnected, going out to the one wheel app and connecting via Bluetooth using this device to our one wheel allows NRF Connect to establish the connection based on the connection that's active on your device. So we now have the one wheel app in the background. We're establishing that whole Bluetooth handshake and we can now move forward with our commands. We want to click on unknown service and a lot of the time when you click on this, it's going to want to jump straight down to the bottom. If you just put your finger on the screen, you can stop it. We're going to look for the unknown characteristic with the UUID E659 F302, which happens to be right here. And we're gonna look for the triple down arrows with the line under it and click that. That should put an X there. That has enabled notifications for us because the board and our phone are going to be communicating back and forth via BLE or Bluetooth Low Energy while we do this. And this is gonna give us some feedback. We'll see here in a moment. Next thing we need to do is make sure that we are in factory mode. So on that same unknown characteristic, go ahead and hit the up arrow with the line under it. We're going to type in a value of CBCB, Charlie boy, Charlie boy. And we're going to click send and our light bar should illuminate green for a moment, letting us know that we have successfully entered factory mode. Perfect. So we are now in factory mode and we can now send the other commands that we're going to go through today. The second one I'm going to go through here, if you are doing, you want to do the second, you don't want to do it after your digital tilt or level calibration, but we're going to calibrate the Hall effect sensors. And to do that on that same unknown characteristic line, we're going to hit that same up arrow that we just did to get into factory mode. And we're going to put in a different code value of C A E A, Charlie, Adam, Edward, Adam, and click send. So that has now gone through the Hall effect sensor calibration. If you happen to ever get an error 22, or that light starts flashing red, which is usually what that's gonna be during this process. Don't panic, it's completely normal. It's happened many times to me, but we don't really need to do anything fancy about it. The next step will not change whether that happens or doesn't. So the next thing we're gonna do here is we are going to take care of our digital tilt. And that digital tilt is going to allow us to calibrate the level of our rails that will be present when we're riding in a standard ride mode on the pint. Obviously, we don't have the custom shaping available. So in this case, we're going to be able to tweak the level calibration of this board without needing something like the elevation or I can't <laughs> tilt. I think it's just called tilt in like the XR custom shaping, but we don't need to offset that or anything like that. That's exactly what it is. Tilt offset. Anyway, we're recalibrating the level, especially if you have aftermarket rails like the W's. This is going to make your riding experience a lot more comfortable and desirable. So something else this does, this is another side note. If you happen to need to change your BMS, normally your controller would tell you that that BMS was not compatible. You would get something like an incompatible hardware error. This can happen on the GT. This can happen on newer model XRs. This can happen on pints. This can happen on the Pint X. This calibration we're doing to reset this level of our rails is also going to take care of that. So if you ever need to swap out your BMS, maybe yours broke and you have another one you just want to put in, you can absolutely do that with the same command that we're going to use for this digital tilt. So enough about that. I'm just going to show you how to do the process. We're going to go ahead on the same unknown characteristic line, hit that up arrow for the final time. We're going to type in CA CA. That's Charlie Adam, Charlie Adam. And we're going to click send. And you can see we got our light bar 
illuminating green again for a moment, returning to white, and that's it. That's the entire process short of our power, power cycle. But before I do that, I do like to disconnect and close out these apps because I don't want any loose ends. Everything's closed on the Android device. We're gonna go ahead and power cycle our board. And it's now back on. Let's make sure that it actually engages. Boom. That's all there is to it. Now you might notice, I didn't mention this in the iOS portion of this, but your ride mode may change to something that you don't normally ride in. Like in this case, I know that it's changed. I like to ride in Skyline but you can just change that right back on the app. It might also have turned on your headlights or taillights. If you don't ride with those on, you can turn those back off as well. It's just something that happens when you recalibrate this and it resets. Otherwise, ride on, have a great time, stay safe. If you have any questions, please let me know down below. If you have any comments that you wanna share, any thanks, any concerns, any insults, any high fives, whatever you want, Send them all down in the comment section below. But as I said a moment ago, go enjoy yourselves. Quit listening to me. I'm just some guy standing in his workspace telling you guys how to increase your stoke levels. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for your time.